Yeah, there we are. Hey, we are live. Greetings, peeps. Mitch and Fella. We're both here this afternoon coming to you from our kitchen in San Francisco, California, where today here in San Francisco, it is, would you call this partly cloudy? That's partly sunny? Saying. I would say partly sunny because it's more sunny than cloudy. I think. Okay. And it's uh, 68 degrees Beautiful. outside. It is actually, we both went out for walks yeah. earlier and it was lovely. really quite lovely. And also just FYI, uh, at where our new house is being built in Brentwood, it is 89 yeah. degrees right now. So that's a 21 degree spread. So we're definitely going to be baking once we get all the way out there. And Nate is in the house. Mr. Blue, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We sure do appreciate it. So uh, what? Let's. we have these pretty pink drinks on the set today. And we didn't really give this a name, but it's sort of a riff on an Arnold Palmer. And if you're familiar with an Arnold Palmer mocktail, it's basically half lemonade and half iced tea. Right. So this is half lemonade and half ginger, ginger beer. beer. Okay, so ginger beer is non-alcoholic, just FYI. So we've got lemon and ginger going on here. And this lovely pink color came because you made us this lovely pink lemonade. It was all I had to store, so I got pink. Well, I think pink is very fabulous. I love the look of this drink. So like we said before, this is just half lemonade and half ginger beer. This happens to be pink lemonade. That's what we're drinking today. Supremely easy to put this together. Delicious. So yeah, it's very yummy. So I see Sunset is in the house. Hey, Sunset, great to see you. Uh, Sunset got a new phone and they're still learning how to use it. Oh, all right. Been that there, fun. done yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and Margaret's here. Margaret's make and bake all the way from Europe. Ooh, oh my hey. gosh, in England. Hey, Across Margaret. Great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. Well, it's afternoon here in California. It's already evening on the East Coast. And all the way where it's Margaret is, it's, it's got to be really late at night or very, very early in the morning. So thank you, Margaret. I'm, she, she's probably up late baking <laughs> something fabulous. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Um, well, Margaret, you can tell us what time it is where you are if you happen to have the clock nearby where you can <laughs> see it. <laughs> okay, so in addition to these lovely mocktails that we'll be sipping, and for those people who come late, we'll run by how to put this super easy drink together again more than once before this show is over. The other thing we've got going on today is a really fun recipe. Tell us what it is. It's gluten-free, not gluten-free. Um, yeah, gluten-free. Gluten-free, low-carb, baking fritters. They're supremely yummy. This is the recipe right here. And this is actually our original recipe. We took someone else's recipe and tweaked some of the ingredients because we wanted to have a version of fritters that were made with almond flour, which, as you know, is very low-carb in comparison to using wheat flour. And also it's naturally gluten-free. So if you have someone in your life that has gluten issues, this will be an excellent recipe for them. And if you didn't tell anyone that this was low carb or gluten-free, no one would ever know. Yeah. Cause sometimes you think, oh, low carb, gluten-free, it's gonna taste like a cardboard, hockey puck. Yeah, yeah like cardboard. Well, that's not the case with this. These are super yummy. And Philip's gonna show us how to put the batter together. And then we're gonna show you two different ways to do it, as well as a third way we're gonna tell you about, because these can be pan fried. We've got a pan right over here on the stove. They can also be baked in a conventional oven. We're going to show you that as well. And for those of you who are fans of air fryers, we also have directions on how to cook this batter in an air fryer, and we'll run that by you before this video ends. Hey, I see Bobby Joe is in the house, ski girly. Great to see you all the way from the East Coast, where it is already slightly after 6 p.m. Cheers to you. In case you missed it, we are drinking a combination of lemonade and ginger beer. Half lemonade, half ginger beer. The drink is pink because Philip made us this lovely pink lemonade today. And so that's our mocktail for today. This is super easy to put together. All we did was pour in some pink lemonade and then top it off with the ginger, ginger beer. beer and gave it a light stir. Really, really super yummy and refreshing. Mmm. Okay, Margaret says it's 11 p.m. Okay. And they've been out this ah. evening. They went out. So they've they've been out on the town. Right. We hope you had a lovely time, Margaret. Whatever it was you were up to, that sounds really fun. Hey, Cooking with Anadi just joined us. Anadi, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. Anadi will like this recipe. Uh, we're going to be making low-carb, 
naturally gluten-free bacon fritters using almond flour. Okay, so we cut the carbs way, way down. And if you have someone in your life with a gluten issue, then you won't have to worry about that with this recipe because there isn't any. So um, what should we do first? We should probably read the ingredients first. Right? Okay. Okay, so we did not print the ingredients so far right down in the description below this video just because we want you to watch the video and find out how to do it. So I'm going to read you the ingredients right now, and then Philip's going to give us a couple of notes about some of these ingredients, the specifics of them. So, okay, here we go, peeps. This is the list of ingredients for the low-carb almond flour bacon fritters. We're going to need five to six slices of very crispy bacon. We've already got it prepped. Uh, we're going to need one quarter to one half of an onion. You can use a yellow onion or a white onion or a red onion. And it's one quarter to one half of an onion, depending on the size. You really want approximately a quarter cup of finely chopped onion when you're done. But you can always add more if you're a big onion fan. You can put as much as the batter will hold. We're also going to need two large eggs, which we've got right here in a bowl. And we have two types of cheese. One is going to be grated Parmesan, and our other cheese today is shredded mozzarella cheese. Now, you can use other cheese if you want. If you want to use cheddar or Colby or Jack, that's fine. And today we are using pre-grated cheese from a bag, which is often a no-no when you want to do a gluten-free recipe. However, the anti-caking agent on this cheese is actually tapioca rather than a wheat product. It's gluten free. And tapioca, yes, tapioca is gluten free. So this is safe to use in a gluten free preparation. A lot of cheeses that are pre-graded may have a wheat product used as the anti-caking agent. So just read the ingredients on the back of the label to be sure there's no wheat products. Otherwise, what you need to do is grate the cheese yourself and then that won't be an issue. Okay, so in addition to the cheeses, we also have a quarter cup of parsley. Dry parsley because we're using herb dried, is fading. Too. Yeah, the herb garden pooped out already. So we're using dried parsley. If you have access to fresh parsley, that's certainly uh, a possibility. Or any herb of your choice. Yeah, yeah you could do sage. Uh, you could do oregano. You could do basil. That would be really yummy. Okay, and we're also going to be using a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper and one half cup of almond flour. And for the pan frying version of this recipe, we're going to need about a tablespoon of olive oil. Health, heart healthy. Heart healthy, heart healthy peeps. And then for the baked version, we're gonna need some cooking spray. We're using a vegetable oil cooking spray today and Philip will show you what to do with this as this recipe unfolds. Okay, so let me check in with the chat really quick. I want to make sure we said hi to everyone. I think we did. Thank you, Margaret says, very pretty lemonade. Thank you, Margaret. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Cheers to all of you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. We really appreciate it. Mmm. Oh, my gosh. This is so, so yummy. Getting plenty of lemonade flavor with that nice, this particular ginger beer that we used has a little bit of a bite to it as far as the heat goes. And ginger and lemon go really, really yeah. well together. So this is super yummy. Okay. Hey, Uncle Steve Shake is in the house. And Uncle Steve, take notice. We have your product right over here. We are using <laughs> Spicy R today. To make our dip. Yes, we're going to use uh, Spicy R in our dip today. So we'll get to that a little bit later. For those of you who want to acquire some of your own Uncle Steve Shake, you can just go to UncleSteveShake.com. And all the flavors are available. I'm going to turn on the oven. Okay, we've got to preheat the oven. So FYI, we're preheating the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what we're doing right now. So we've got the oven going on. Thank you for remembering to do that. I wrote us a note right here. So now we can put that aside. Okay. Uh, Sunset says they made lemon soda. They just Ooh. added yeah. seltzer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we add seltzer to things as you've probably seen because Sunset is a regular yeah. viewer. We love using seltzer. Like lemon, lemon soda yeah, I like having yeah. a fizz to things. Yeah. That it makes things more drinkable, I think. So, okay. Okay, so now what we've got going on here, I need to move my drink over here out of your way so you can do your work. So Philip's going to put this recipe that we just developed together for us. And one of the things we got to do first is prepare the onion. Chop some onion. So you're going to chop the onion, and we're calling this finely chopped. So you can go smaller if you want. Uh, 
I find that little like sort of one eighth by one eighth by one eighth inch pieces is actually a really good size and it gets incorporated really nicely throughout the batter okay. if it's smaller. Okay, so that's gonna be our leftover. So you used approximately a quarter, quarter of an onion. and this happens to be a white onion. You can use no, a yellow. yellow onion. Oh, this is it's yellow onion. Yellow. Oh, it looks so white. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Oh, this no, you is know a what? yellow no, no, onion. No, no, you know what it is? I got the one out of the fridge there. This is, oh, this it's is yellow. I, it was yellow. Yeah. Okay, this is a yellow onion. Sorry about that. You can use a white onion or a red onion. We actually really like red onion for its assertive quality. So you can certainly do that if you'd like to. And I just chopped the white you, onion earlier. Right. Well, if you prefer, you could also use scallions instead. If you want to cut those, uh, you'd have to chop them down a little on the small side rather than just creating discs, so they'll be a little bit too big to incorporate well into the batter. Janine Johnson has joined us in the house from Carlsbad. Hi, Janine. Great to see you. We are, well, we're, we're cooking today. We're baking and we're cooking because this recipe is going to get prepared two ways. We're making low-carb bacon fritters with almond flour, and we're going to bake them in the oven over here on the countertop. Philip's also going to pan fry some on the stove. And later on, when we get to the actual cooking, I will also tell you how to use your air fryer to prepare the bacon fritters. So if you're a bacon fan, you are going to love, love, love this recipe. And you won't have to worry if you're on a low carb food plan, you can enjoy these without ruining your diet because the carbs are significantly reduced thanks to using almond flour instead of wheat flour. Now, a lot of times when we use there, you see Philip just finished prepping the onion. So that's just been finely chopped. That looks lovely. Excellent. Now, when you make a recipe and you use almond flour instead of wheat flour, you can't just substitute it one to one. So you're going to have to test different things and see what the ratio is for whatever particular recipe you're working on. There's no hard and fast rule, unfortunately, for replacing wheat flour with almond flour. Okay, now at this point, Philip is pouring out bacon lardon. Now, you used about six or eight pieces of bacon yeah. to create that. Mm -hmm. And you chopped the bacon up first and then fried it in a pan on the stove. I like doing that. Okay, so now Philip's gonna chop it even smaller because yeah. we want this to be not dust, but really, really finely chopped. Yep. So it incorporates really nicely yeah. into- These are a little big. Yeah, the lardons are lovely for, yeah. like this size of lardon is lovely to use on pizza and we often do that. Mm. And, but for, for grilled cheese sandwiches, yeah, for incorporating into this batter, we want to cut these pieces of lardon already smaller. You can get the bacon cooked and crispy any way that you like to. You can do a pan on the stove. You can use the microwave type of cooker. Whatever way you prefer to prepare your bacon is fine. But what you want to make sure you have is like this, an extremely crispy product. The bacon should not be rubbery. The fat needs to be completely thoroughly rendered. So you want crispy, crispy, crispy. As yeah. you can see here, this crunch, is very crunch. crunchy and crispy. Hey, in the kitchen with Karen just joined us, and she is poolside today. Oh, lucky girl. Oh, awesome. That is so cool. Isn't it fun that you can watch videos while you're by the pool, Karen? Karen's going to be our new neighbor in Brentwood. We're going to be not too far from her, so we are going to be hanging out. So I hope you're having a lovely time by the pool. I've actually seen pictures of the pool at Karen's housing complex and it is quite spectacular and it looks like a really fun place to hang out so thank Something you very much cool. for joining us from the pool karen and also in the house just joining us is cj from cooking with hey, CJ. cj hi cj great to see you this afternoon thank you for coming to hang out with us i'm sure he has something amazing cooking cj has a new video just about every other day he's always got something good going on and he uses all of those really cool ninja foodie appliances including this new like tabletop grill that was in one of his most recent videos. CJ, the food off of that grill looked really, really good. So thank you for showing us how to do that recipe. It looked awesome. Okay. Some of that bacon. But we have even more to do. Okay, so Philip is going to chop up just a little bit more of this bacon. Yeah, we're, we're actually... Um, like we made eight bacon. pieces. Yeah. We're actually going to use about six pieces worth of the bacon. So save a little bit of it for later. For later, for another project or a grilled cheese sandwich. Or just snacking like on. Yeah, <laughs> that's, how can you go wrong with bacon for a snack? I don't think you can. Okay, so that's looking really good. So as you can see, I'm going to hold this up here. 
the onion and bacon have been chopped finely and they're approximately the same size little bits. I'm gonna bring this back here so people can see what you're working on. Was this mine? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm gonna use it, you know. Okay, well, we'll share. <laughs> Crunch, crunch, crunch. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Okay. okay. There we go. That's okay, good. so we're just about to the end of getting the bacon chopped. Nice rough chop there. There we go. That's a lot of lovely bacon. Mm, oh baby. my gosh. Hold that up so everyone can have a look at all of that. Ooh, that looks so good. Bacon. CJ says we need to get you a bigger cutting board. You know what, CJ? I always think that too. I like to have lots of space to spread out. Philip likes to work in a tight, controlled space as opposed to me. I would have the cutting board six times this size. We had a similar discussion earlier about the size of the bowls to mix things in. Philip wants to whisk the eggs in that itsy bitsy bowl. I would have gotten a bowl bigger than this so I could splash it all around and don't have to worry about anything. But, uh, Anyway, speaking of the egg, Philip's going to move on to doing that now. So Philip's going to crack both of these eggs and then whisk them together. We do have bigger cutting boards, but we use these little bitty ones actually are pretty convenient. We use these all the time for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and everything in between. They actually hang, well, the blender's in the way right now, but right here in the back, right there, there's a rack that these little babies hang on. And it's actually super convenient. But we do have giant size, well, not giant size, but larger cutting boards, you know, like this. But what I really want is for one of those lovely cutting board companies that we all see on Instagram to send us one of their amazing cutting boards with our Mitch and Philip logo on it. Our brand new Mitch and Philip logo, I should mention. We're wearing our new swag today, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. I want to say hello to Daniel from the Second Chance Love Channel. Great Yay. to see you, Daniel. And Daniel, we congratulations to Daniel. Daniel's channel has been nominated for a Gratitude Award for best, I guess it's best, best thrifting channel is what the award is, uh, nomination is for. So congratulations, Daniel. That's a really awesome thing to have happen. And his channel just recently went over 1,000 subscribers. So lots of good things happening at the Second Chance Love channel. So great to see you here, Daniel. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so now the cheeses. the cheeses. So now you're going to measure out quarter cup of parmesan, and that goes right in with the bacon and the chopped onion. And you got the eggs all whisked up, and you just used a fork to do that. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. We love our new swag too. We've got aprons, shirts, hats, coffee cups, shot glasses, <laughs> flasks, you name it, hoodies, boxer shorts. Okay, now we're going in mozzarella. with the mozzarella. And the mozzarella is also a quarter cup of cheese. Yes. Okay. Now, we did list the ingredients earlier in the video, so if you missed that part, if you want to go back and watch the replay, then you can uh, hear the entire list of the ingredients. Baking Diva is in the house. Hey, Dolores, great to see you. Yay. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's awesome to see you. She's, uh, I just really enjoyed your videos this summer, Baking Diva, especially her vacation videos. Remember I told you about the one where they went to the board? Oh, yeah. It was so great. It was so funny. I hope uh, Dolores doesn't mind me telling this little story from her video. She was filming at, okay, now Philip's measuring out the parsley. Quarter cup. Okay, quarter cup of parsley. Anyway, Baking Diva was with her family. She was at the boardwalk. They were in front of the, I think it's the the waffle, was it the waffle cone? What do they call those things that you squirt the dough? It's um, funnel cake. Funnel cake, that was it. Okay, funnel cake. So Baking Diva was filming the funnel cakes and all she, she wasn't filming any of the people or the people working there or the people around her. She was only filming just the funnel cakes in the counter and you hear this very nasally voice say, no taking pictures, no taking pictures. <laughs> there is no photography allowed. That's exactly how it sounded. I hope I nailed that. Anyway, am I right, Baking Diva? Was that how it sounded? Anyway, Baking Diva said that the person behind the counter was rude, and I have to agree. I, I don't know why you wouldn't want people taking pictures of your products and giving you publicity about your lovely funnel cakes at the boardwalk. That just didn't seem to make sense to me. I always want people taking pictures of our food. 
So anyway, thanks for sharing that story, Baking Diva. Your vacation videos were super fun to watch. And it's great to see you here this afternoon. Okay. Oh, I know. Uh, Janine is commenting right now about Baking Diva's Bundt Cake series. Ooh. I think she did almost a dozen different Bundt Cakes. That was really awesome, too. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay. So now what you've moved on, and you're preparing the garlic next. Well, I put my cutting board away, and I'm not going to get on it. Okay. So we're just going to get another one. That's why we have more than one. Okay. So you're just going to prepare two cloves of garlic, and then you're going to run it through. Cut the ends off. We're going to run it through the garlic press. Yeah, we've got a thing about that. We see lots of cooking videos on TV where the chefs don't cut the root end of the garlic off. And we think that's kind of nasty. So we always make sure to do that. Uh, Sunset is claiming that maybe the funnel cake owner had board of health concerns about the condition <laughs> of their, their display case. You know, it could be. I mean, they're... I don't know why you wouldn't want people seeing your products, but anyway. Uh, okay, just joining us is Terry from Madwood Barbecue. Hi, Terry. Great to see you this afternoon. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. We are right in the middle of preparing the batter for the low-carb bacon fritters. And you don't have to tell anyone these are low-carb because no one will know from the taste of them, that's for sure. We're just substituting almond flour for wheat flour. How's that line that from that hair color go? Everyone will notice. No, that's about the juvederm stuff. Oh, that was that yeah, <laughs> people, uh, we're not going to go there right now. So, uh, Margaret asked earlier, and I missed her question Does the almond flour make the fritters taste of almonds or is it mild? It's mild, yeah. yeah. You know, there's so many other flavors in here, you know. I, I, mean, I wouldn't really be able to pick out almond. I would say I didn't really taste the almond at all because we made these prior to this show. Obviously, we like to make everything ahead of time to make sure we know that we, our recipes are spot on and can be replicated. Um, but no, I could not taste the almond flour. I really got lots of bacon, cheese, and then the seasoning. That's really the flavors that I got when we ate these last week when we made them. So thank you for asking about that, Margaret. You would think there's actually considering we've made a lot of almond flour recipes. This one only has a small amount of almond flour, half a mm -hmm. cup. We've made recipes that have a lot more and they didn't really taste of almond either. So it's not necessarily that more would change that. So, um, okay. So Philip just minced or actually cut up the garlic, put it in a garlic press, ran it through the press and then transfer that right into the mixing bowl with all of our other ingredients. Now we're done. Okay, so now we're done with the cutting board. For those of you who missed it, we are drinking lemonade mixed with ginger beer. So it's kind of a riff on an Arnold Palmer, except we've switched out the iced tea for the ginger beer. And Philip got us pink lemonade. That's how we got this lovely pink color on these mocktails today. Mmm. These are so, so good. A little bit of pepper. Sunset says to them, almond flour tastes like wheat. I don't know if I think that. I don't know if I've actually just like tasted the almond flour to see if it tastes like well, nuts or not. Well, I make those almond flour uh, shortbreads. It's just almond flour, butter, and sugar, and um, they're sort of almondy. But I don't. It's not like when I'm eating almonds, you just plain almond. I guess because almond is really kind of mild for almost anything. Even just uh, sugar and vanilla will kind of mask the flavor. Okay, so now you just went in with the black pepper, black pepper quarter teaspoon. and that was just a quarter teaspoon. So there's not a lot. And notice that there is no salt in this recipe. We're getting plenty of salt going on from the Parmesan cheese and from the bacon. So you don't need to add any salt to this recipe. <laughs> How are we doing? So <laughs> now we've got everything in there except the almond flour. And the egg. And, and the egg. I'm going to mix okay. all these ingredients. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to be almond for the next. And then I'm going to egg last. Okay, eggs last. Okay. For now. I see Suzanne has joined us from Suzanne's Sweet Kitchen. Hey, Suzanne. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us today. Awesome to see your name come across our screen. Thank you so much. She says she loves the new merch. We designed a new logo. You know, as some of you may know, we changed our channel name about a year ago, and we weren't really sure what we wanted to do for a logo, so we just didn't do a new one right away. And I had a brainstorm a couple weeks ago, and this is what I came up with, and Philip liked it. So we're using this now for all of our merch. And you can get merch just like this, as well as coffee cups, shot glasses and other goodies at our customized girl store and there's a link on our main youtube page uh oh you're gonna sneeze walk away from the food it's the pepper that does it every time you okay boo yeah i just i don't like to sneeze because of the back thing if i yeah. sneeze, i can ruin my whole day one sneeze can like put me in pain for like hours hours i used to like sneezing you know i really did oh anyway so 
I okay. can mix everything up together now. Okay, so that's everything except the yeah, eggs except. and the almond flour. No, almost in your nut. This is the almond flour. Oh, you put the almond flour yeah, in. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I misspoke again. Okay, so we've got everything in there and we're just waiting for the egg. I just like to stir it up first. Everything's all mixed up. Oh, Bobby Joe, you will love Baking Diva's channel. Dolores is an awesome baker and she's supremely fun to watch. And we just love, love, love her channel. So I'm sure you will have a great time checking out her videos. Okay, so in goes the egg that Philip previously whisked together. You want me to get that out of your way? Okay, we're done with this. Here, take, uh, what else can I get out of your way? All these other things? Okay. Voila! Okay. Now, we're just... We'll do some cleanup a little later. Stir everything into the egg, or the egg into everything else. Okay. Think about so it. now you're just incorporating everything together with a spoon. Yeah. Very easy. Okay. And our oven over here is preheated, so by the time we're ready to put a sheet tray of these in the oven, the oven's already going to be hot for us. Well, that comes together very, very easily. And it's amazing how wet it gets from that just those two eggs. It looks a lot wetter than I was expecting it to look based on the results that we got when we made it before because it does not stay gooey and wet once it's baked. It got really nice and crispy. But we'll talk about that more once these okay, are ready to on. taste test. Well, that's it. Okay, so there's our batter. And now we're ready to go. Yeah, so first thing we do okay. is... Now we need, what we need to tell people is that we have a baking sheet already prepared with a piece of parchment paper that we first we sprayed the baking sheet then put on a piece of parchment paper and now what are you going to do now we're going to spray it again now we're going to spray the parchment paper over but the sink. philip's going to go to the sink so we don't get any of this on the camera over here in front of us so you our scoop okay so we're just going to scoop a few scoops on to the greased parchment paper that's on the baking sheet. Sunset is commenting that sneezing sitting down with your knees bent makes it easier. Oh. And All that right. you should keep your head lifted up during the sneezing, not put your head okay. down like this. Okay. So we'll try that next time there's a sneezing fit and we'll see how that works out. Thank you for that suggestion, Sunset. So you're just uh, using a medium sized scoop. Spray flat and just filled flat, not right. heaping filled. And you're scooping out what's going to wind up being six fritters. And this is gonna be the pan that goes into the June oven to bake. Yes, in fact, we are using our June oven right over here, our countertop June oven. You can use a conventional oven to bake these as well, if you like. Then just- um, Now what we're gonna do- Just pat them down a little bit, just a little. It doesn't really spread by itself. No, it doesn't. It's a pretty it's like a cookie. It's a pretty dense batter, even though it does not yield a dense result yeah. when it comes to the fritter. Okay. So scooped out and then gently patted so they're like about half an inch thick. Yeah. Maybe yeah. three sixteenths. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. So there you have it. These are ready oh, to go in the oven. Now we spray oh wait, there's one more thing. Again. Yes. Okay, now Philip's going to spray the top of the fritters with the cooking spray. We're just using vegetable oil cooking spray. You can use any kind of cooking spray that you prefer. Yeah. So now those got sprayed, and now they're going into the June oven over here. The oven has been preheated to 400 degrees, and it's going to take 20 minutes total for these to bake. But halfway through at the 10-minute mark, we're going to pop those out and flip them over and then put them back in the oven. Now, the next preparation we're going to do with the bacon fritter batter is on the stove top. And I'm going to move your drink just so the camera is showing what we're doing over here. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. So we're going to, how high do you have the stove turned up? Oh, like, you know, medium high. It's medium high. And you're going to put a tablespoon of olive oil in to do a pan fry. So it's very, very shallow amount of oil. Yeah. Now we did not try these in a deep fryer, but my sense of it is this would just fall apart in the deep fryer. How, what do you think? Yeah, I think, I don't think it would. I don't think it's really I mean, deep it's fryer friendly. Well, we'll, we'll try it the next time we have the deep fryer yeah. out. But for right now, we're gonna show you uh, how to bake them, how to pan fry them. And I'll also tell you how to use your air fryer if you like to cook with an air fryer. 
I know Bacon Diva loves to cook with an air fryer. I haven't really tried that yet. Uh, we have, there's actually an air fryer setting on the June oven and a special rack that's very similar to air fryer racks and just countertop air fryers. But we actually, honestly, we haven't really used that more than once or twice. Okay, so now what's happening is we're just waiting for the pan to get hot. And how do you like, to, how hot do you like the oil to be? Do you like it just to be like, start to get a, that sheen to it? Or do you want it to be smoking? Oh, not smoking, not smoking. Smoking's too hot. Okay, so medium heat on the stove, and we're just gonna wait till the oil spreads around and gets a little bit of that sheen to it. That shimmer. The shimmer, that's what I mean to say. Okay. I think we're getting it. So we don't have close-up cam on the stove today, but uh, the stove is right over here. So I think we'll actually do okay, as long as we keep your drink from being in front of the picture. Because we've got a lot of stuff sitting out here Easy access. that's kind of in our way. So let me move some of these things. This will be George Baca, too, in this FYI. Yes, if you booze, we're on the wagon. But if you booze, yes, a splash of vodka in this would make an excellent cocktail. So you can take this mocktail to a cocktail just with some vodka. Okay, so we want to leave the Uncle Steve shake front and center here because we're going to be using this to make a dip to dip the fritters in once okay. they're done and ready for taste test. Let's see. How are we doing? Okay. So we're going to test one at this point. Philip's testing to see Not if the oil's really hot enough. Yeah. What needs to you need to hear a little bit of a sizzle when you drop it's the just, stupid battery. It's just for the edge. It's not quite ready, but it's getting there. I should have turned it on earlier. Baking Diva wants to know if you've lost weight because you're looking slim. Yes, actually. Uh, I lost almost 10 pounds. So far. So far. So far. So far. So far. He's been doing really good on his food plan, Baking Diva. My, uh, my physical therapist gave me some exercises to do, uh, sort of calisthenic life and some uh, some weight, lightweight things to do. And I do them three times a week. And then we've and got... I walk a lot. Yeah. Uh, he's been back to walking miles and miles and miles all around the city. And you're doing really well with that. I feel good. And we're also doing recipes like this being a lower carb using almond flour, things that we learned from the nutritionist that advised yeah. you. So now we've got this going on in the pan over here. We're just waiting for the oil to get a tiny bit hotter because what you really want to do is here just a little bit of a sizzle and then see bubbles coming out from underneath the batter once you drop it into the pan. We're getting there. It's getting there. Sorry. No worries. It takes as long as it takes. So in the meantime, for those of you who missed the beginning of the show, we're drinking a mocktail today that is a riff on an Arnold Palmer. And an Arnold Palmer, if you're not familiar with that mocktail, is half lemonade and half iced tea. So what we have here is half lemonade and half ginger beer. So ginger and lemon, as you probably already know, go really well together. And these drinks have a pink blush to them today because Philip made us pink lemonade to use for these mocktails. So this is super easy to make. Just half and half lemonade and ginger beer. That's it. Super easy. Okay, Suzanne, thank you so much for joining us. It was great to see you. And we look forward to more videos from your channel. She makes the most beautiful cakes and cupcakes and her Ooh. frosting techniques are off the chain. So great to see you today, Suzanne. Thank you for coming to hang out with us. Okay. So now we're ready to go on with adding the rest of the batter, a scoop at a time, yeah. into the saute pan. This is a non-stick pan that Philip's using, and he's added a tablespoon of olive oil as our grease agent. If Just you to give us a little, Pardon a me? little sizzle. A little bit of a sizzle going on. Okay, let me peek in the oven and see how these are doing. These are looking good. They're starting to get a little bit bubbly and sizzly here in the oven. And we've got about four and a half minutes to go before it's time to pop those babies out and flip them over. You smell really good. It does. Uh, the, the herbs, the bacon, the pepper, it's excellent. One more. Now, Philip's using the rest of the batter and putting all of it into the saute pan at the same time. And then we'll cook those on one side and then flip them over. And you're also going to press them down a little yep. bit as you go, too. Yep. Okay. You need to keep that. Can I take this yep. out of your way? Okay, so we're going to get rid of this now. Ooh. 
Woohoo. Okay, and as you can see, Philip is just using the scoop to press these down just a little bit because they don't really flatten out on their own. So you just wanna press them down a little bit. So they're about a half an inch thick. Daniel from Second Chance Love Channel, Love Channel says, I always get hungry watching you both cook. These look oh so yummy. Well, they are oh so yummy. And I'm not just saying that because we made them. Of course, I always wanna make yummy things and so does Philip, but these are actually supremely good. And because there's no you know, extra carbs, you know, it's guilt free if you're on a low carb food plan like yeah. we are. So, and these are super yum. We ate them last week while we were watching TV after Philip made the first ones. And just so you know, this is great party food. You can also reheat these again once they're cooked in the oven. It's really super easy. If you don't eat them all at the first sitting, you can just put them in the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes, and that'll just warm them through really nicely without over baking them. So that's a way to reheat these as well. And we tried a couple that were at room temperature and they still tasted really good. So I think this would be a good thing for a buffet or for otherwise for party food because it doesn't necessarily have to be hot right out of the pan in order to be yummy. We're also going to do a little dip in a few minutes once we get these going. Now these are just gonna cook for about three minutes on each side. So once that time has passed, Philip's going to flip these over and let them go for another two or three minutes till they're nice and golden brown on both sides. It's, it's just a lot less time to cook them in the pan than just cook them in the oven. Yes. Yet, I thought, 20 minutes at 400, they'll be burned as a quick. No, they're actually pretty good. No, they were pretty good. And they, the browning on the pan fried and the bake, baked versions were very similar. The baked version, of course, if you like baking like I do, because you can put things in the oven and then kind of forget about it till the timer goes off and then you can do something else. The stovetop version is a little higher maintenance because we have to watch them the whole time they're being cooked. But the start to finish process of doing it in the pan is only six or eight minutes as opposed to 20 minutes in the oven. So how are those doing? They're looking good on top. Flip it. Ooh. There we go. Okay, we're starting to get some brown going on. There. Oh, yeah. Those are looking yummy. Well, when we get to the other side of the pan, those of you who are watching at home will be able to check this out. Right now, the side of the pan is, they're getting a little, a little overdone. Okay, looking pretty good. Uh, Terry from Madwood made tuna casserole for dinner. Oh, and I love tuna casserole. He is stuffed. Tuna, Bill loves tuna. Oh. He eats tuna sandwiches with tuna salad all the time. Oh, I love tuna casserole. Okay, so those these are nicely crisp. Very nicely brown. Yeah, that's okay. okay. That has to do with it, but that's okay. So now we're going to give, that was about three minutes on the first side, and the second side is going to take another two or three minutes. So those are just going to cook. We have the ones in the oven. They're going to come out very shortly here. So let me get these hot pads ready. And then once those get turned over and those pop out, we're going to show you how to make this dip, and then we're Philip's mocktail's gone, so I'm going to make him another one, and you can see how to do that as well. Okay, so we're just waiting for the oven. Oh, 30 seconds left. 30 second countdown, people, and then we're going to take the oven ones out, and Philip's going to flip them over, and then we're going to put them back in the oven for 10 more minutes for a total of 20 minutes of bake time. Almost there. Okay, you okay? Yeah. Getting sweaty. Good morning. It gets warm in the kitchen when you have the stove and the oven on at the same time. I don't have to tell those of you at home that <laughs> because it happens in every kitchen. Okay, so we're almost ready to pop these babies out, and Philip's going to flip them over. Let me make sure I give you plenty of space to do that. Do you want me to put some paper towels or some pop holders out here on the counter to set that up? You okay? Mm -hmm. Are you going to do it over here? Okay. All right. So now Philip's just going to use a spatula and flip the fritters over that were in the oven. They've already been in for 10 minutes, so if you missed the beginning, we've had these baking for 10 minutes already, and now Philip's gonna flip them over and bake them for 10 more minutes. They look a lot blonder than... They look blonder than they did last time we did this. But that's okay. Oh, well, yeah, they, they were. The baked ones we noticed before, they were blonder than the ones that were pan fried. So if you prefer a little bit blonder than the baked version might be the way you want it. Make it a little darker once we, you know, when just baking it. Yeah, they're going to bake some more and they will get a little more color on them. So let me tell you really quick, for those of you who like to use an air fryer, if you want to do these, what you want to do 
is preheat your air fryer to 375 degrees and then place the fritters on the air fryer mesh in a single layer. You really want to make sure they're in a single layer, like what we're doing in the pan and like what we did in the oven. And then you want to go ahead and cook the fritters for about, uh, well, you want to spray them with cooking spray, just like we did with the ones that went in the oven. And then you want to cook them for about eight minutes and then take them out and turn them over and cook them for another four or five minutes for a total of 12 or 13 minutes. And that should get you a nice, crisp, even browning on both sides in your air fryer. Okay, so you can pan fry these like Philip's just done. You can bake these like what we're still going on in the June countertop oven. And you can also do these in the air fryer. Now, these are coming off. There's one or two that look like they went a little over <laughs> in the browning department. But otherwise, these look like sheer perfection to me. The one thing about the stove is it's hard to tell when you got a pan down when it's centered on the burner because the, the, the grid over the stove, what do you call this thing? The, the, the grate. The grate isn't symmetrical. Yeah, it's not centered over the top of the heat source. So sometimes it looks like the pan's on the center, but the burner, the heat of the burner itself is actually off to one side of the pan <laughs> and so you know well you know we're we're talking and cooking at the same time and once in a while okay. something goes a little over oh, yeah. so what now do the dip okay so now we're going to do the dip Woo -hoo. time for the rain uncle rain. steve shake daniel's asking how is the weather in sf well we mentioned that earlier at the top of the show it's actually partly sunny today and it's right now 68 degrees in Brentwood, where we're moving right now, it's completely, totally sunny, and it's 89 degrees. So it's a lot hotter in Brentwood than it is here in San Francisco. It's actually quite lovely out here today. And Daniel is mentioning it's 91 in Anaheim. Ah, mm -hmm. That's a little on the warm side, boo. Yeah. And he also says, your fritters look perfectly golden. And overall, I would have to agree with you. These look Looks really like super Well, that one got a little <laughs> bit, little bit overly brown, but it's not like it's not going to taste good. It's not burnt. It's just really, definitely it's, seared. It's it's, it's heavily we'll seared. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so now you're just going to measure out half a cup yep. of sour cream, and we're just using a glass measuring cup so Philip can do the measuring and then the stirring in the same vessel. And then we'll transfer the dip to a pretty bowl for serving. Okay, there we go. All right, half a cup of sour cream. Let me put this up for you. Teaspoon. Okay, so you're going to measure out one teaspoon of Uncle Steve's Shake Spicy R version. And, I've been open. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have it prepared for you. That's rude. Oops. I should have pulled the lid off. Okay. Let me take that off your hands. Got more? Uh, okay. Let me have that. That's okay. Now. now we're good. Put that on. Okay. Spoon. Okay, so we're gonna measure out a nice flat, even tablespoon of the spicy teaspoon. Or, excuse teaspoon. me, <laughs> teaspoon. Oh no, <laughs> tablespoon. Would probably be really spicy. Well, it would be really good because so this good. this mix is awesome. But when they say when Uncle Steve says spicy R. He's not kidding, okay? This, it's, you know, it's not ghost pepper hot, but it definitely has a kick to it. Okay, so um, this is Uncle Steve's Spicy R Shake. You can get this at unclesteves.com, just like we did, and have it sent right to your front door. And there we go. Okay, and so there's our dip. Very super easy. Easy, easy, easy. Sour case, cream with case, Uncle case, Steve's. Case, case. I know, and it's super yummy. Okay. okay. You did. Sometimes I forget to turn off. Okay, stuff. so the other ones, the other version is still baking in the oven. And you're going to start preparing your serving bowl. Terry from Madwood Barbecue says it's 82 in Iowa. Oh. And is it is it like muggy, like sticky, hot, or is it more like a dry heat? It's like, kind of muggy here today. It's kind of muggy here today, which is not really usual. How was that? Oh, baby. Really good? Mm. Yeah, Uncle Steve shake. No matter what flavor you try, you're going to like it. Those Dang. things are yummo. Terry says it's muggy. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of hot. Or it's kind of hard when it's hot and muggy at the same time. Okay, so here we go with the Uncle Steve's shake dip. Now, you can use whatever kind of dip you want for these. And, in fact, you actually don't really need to have a dip. You can serve these just plain. But a dip is always fun. You can just do plain sour cream. 
You could do something cooling, like maybe use cucumber and make a tzatziki, or you could go with something hot and spicy, like what we're doing today with the Uncle Steve shake. Now we made a big fat mess all over that pretty bowl. Here, I got one. Clean up, I'll too. Okay, so there we go. We've got our sauce, or excuse me, our dip, all ready to go. Okay. Okay, so now the ones are still in the oven. There's still about four minutes to go on those little babies. But Philip's going to put some ice cubes in his glass, and we're going to make another fresh mocktail. And this really doesn't take any instruction to show you how this is done because it's supremely easy. What we've got here is pink lemonade. You can use any kind of lemonade you want. And we've also got ginger beer. Let me show you this. Get it over here so you can read the label. It's called Q ginger beer. And this ginger beer is very, very ginger forward. In fact, it actually has like a, a, a heat level to it. It's very spicy. So we're just going to go in with half a glass of the pink lemonade. And like I said, you can use any lemonade that you have handy. And then we're going to top that off with the ginger beer. So that's a riff on an Arnold Palmer. We've just left out the iced tea and replaced it with the ginger beer. I'm going to top my drink off a little bit. Well, right. sir. <coughs> Voila. Okay, and there you have it. Pink Wonderfulness. Pink Wonderfulness. Maybe that should be the name of it. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Lemon and ginger taste ginger. really, really good together. Terry is in the house. Hey, Terry. Great to see you. And Mona has just joined us. Hi, Mona. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. It's really awesome to see you here. Thank you so much, Terry. This is our new swag. We've got, as you can see, Philip's wearing our, one of our new shirts and has the logo on the front and the back. And we also have trucker hats and aprons and hoodies and coffee cups and wow. shot glasses, wow. all kinds of really cool, fun stuff. So you can just click on the store link on our main page to our YouTube channel, and that'll take us take you to our customized girl store where all these lovely goodies can be ordered. Mm. These aprons are only 20 bucks. I mean, this is a really nice apron for 20 bucks. So I think this is a good deal. And they're super cute. So anyway, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. We really appreciate it. Now we've got the dip ready, which was just sour cream mixed with spicy our Uncle Steve shake. How are those doing? Okay. They're ready. Do you want to wait to taste until we get the other ones out? Just a few minutes. We've only got two minutes to go on the fritters that are in the oven. And once we have both of them out, then we want to do a side-by-side -side taste test because we want to be able to describe for you what the actual taste or texture difference is between the baked version of the fritters and the pan-fried version of the fritters. Ginger Snap Kitchen is in the house. Hey, Stephanie. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to join us this afternoon. We sure do appreciate it. And just so you know, uh, Stephanie, we're drinking these lovely pink mocktails today. This is a riff on an Arnold Palmer, and we've replaced the iced tea with ginger beer. So we have pink lemonade and ginger beer mixed together in equal parts, just served over ice, supremely easy to put together, and this tastes really, really yummy. This is so good. Mmm. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna be drinking these the rest of the afternoon. The ginger beer and the lemon go really, really good together. Okay, so what we're waiting for right now is the batch of fritters that Philip's been baking in the June countertop oven are just about 50 seconds away from coming out of the oven, and then those will be ready to go. And then it's going to be time Lisa, for a yay. taste test. Hello. Yes, we've been waiting all afternoon to eat these babies. Ginger Snap Kitchen is saying pink drinks are her favorite. Her kitchen has a lot of pink things. Yeah. She has a pink uh, Dutch oven pot for the stove, a pink blender, all kinds of pink utensils, pink, pink, pink. Everything in Ginger Snap Kitchen is cute and cool. Ooh. Your kitchen, Stephanie, is so adorable. It's got a lot of retro elements to it, and it's, like, cute and adorable. It's really, really cool. And, of course, it doesn't hurt that she makes lovely food she'd love the tricky motel yes ginger uh stephanie if you haven't seen the show trixie motel that's with a drag queen whose name is trixie Mattel. 
she bought a vintage motel in Palm Springs, California, and has converted it all and redone it. And just about everything in the home hotel is pink, 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 pink. So you would love that. So if you haven't already seen Trixie Motel, look that up on your digital streaming service and have a look because you will love the look of the Trixie Motel. Everything go. is pink. Okay, so now they the other ones. browner on their face in the oven. They did. Yeah. But they do look, they're not as, uh, they're browned in a different way because they didn't come right in contact with the pan, like the pan fried version. But they definitely look like they have a nice golden brown color going on and a crispness to the exterior. So now we've prepared these two ways. We also told you how to do it in an air fryer. So Philip's going to lay us out with a few of these on our Fiesta shell serving plate. And then we'll give these babies a try. Barbecue Mike G is in the house. Hey, Mike, great to see you. Mike says, you finally ate the rainbow cake. Oh, Mike, yeah. <laughs> Mike pays attention to the details because Mike also <laughs> noticed our colorful lights a couple weeks ago. We added these bright colored lights to the back of the set to try to make things look a little more interesting and pretty. And prior to this floral arrangement sitting here for the last three weeks, we had a clear transparent cake stand with the rainbow frosted cake, which is actually a prop cake. It's not a Dino real cake. And plaster of Paris. It is. And I painted it. I actually did it in a video. I think that was about three or four years ago. I did a tutorial video on our channel here to show you how to paint a rainbow cake. So that cake actually is in the other room on a cake stand. And today I just wanted to mix things up a little bit. So thanks for noticing, Mike, that things are different on the set. We do like to change things around every once in a while just to keep it interesting. So, okay. Now, the food, da, 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 da. let's turn that around and show everyone. Now, let me take a picture of that. Usually, I don't like telephones on the set, but, you know, telephones have cameras and pictures are something you need when you've got food going on. So I'm going to take a picture of this beauty plate right now with my phone, and then that way we can post this later to our Instagram so you can see a close-up of how this dish actually came out. Oh, that looks pretty good. Ooh, awesome. I love this turquoise shell plate from Fiesta. That is super cool. Okay, thanks for indulging me and in getting a picture. Now we've got the pan fried ones on this side and the baked ones on this side. And we've got our lovely dip made with Uncle Steve Shake Spicy R in the ramekin right in the center of the Fiesta wire shell bowl. So now it is time to taste the moment we've all been waiting for. So we're going to go for the pan fried one first. Okay. We're gonna go for the pan fried version first. Now I'm gonna taste this just by itself before we dip it so we can see the flavor profile. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. oh my Bacon. God. Bacon for days. Bacon for days. I can taste the cheese. And the onions. Mm-hmm, the onions are lovely. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Probably helps a little bit. These have a really, really, really lovely mm. flavor to them. These are so good. Mm. 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 Oh my gosh, these are yummy. And the fact that they're low carb means we can eat a lot of them. Mmm. These are really good people. And as you saw, this is not hard to put together. And this would be great for, you know, game day food, party food, anytime you need a really yummy snack. And these reheat really nicely mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. you can make a bunch ahead of time and then mm -hmm. pop a few in the oven and just warm them up whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. How's the dip? Mmm. Okay, I'm going to try the dip with the Uncle Steve shake now. Mmm. Mm. Really good. That is so yummy. What I like about it is we get the contrast of the creamy coolness of the sour cream with the spiciness of the Uncle Steve shake spicy R. And so that cool creaminess with the spice is a really nice contrast. And it plays really nicely with the flavors in the bacon fritters themselves supremely yummy these are good oh my gosh these are good okay now those were the ones that were prepared in the pan on the stove top next we're going to have a taste of the ones that were baked in the oven so then we can describe for you what the difference is between the two preparation methods so let's give these ones from the oven a taste cheers boo cheers everyone mm. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. These are good. These are really good as well. But they're a little drier. Yeah. That's what I was going to say to you. The 20 minutes in the oven takes more moisture out. It does. So they're actually um, also a little crispier. Yeah, the edges are a little crispier than the pan fried ones, even though the pan fried ones look a lot darker than the ones that came out of the oven. This actually has a thicker crust on the yeah. outside mm -hmm. than the pan fried version does. But I think the pan fried ones are moister on the interior yeah. than the baked ones. Like Philip said, yeah. the baking really dehydrates the product. So I think the baked ones probably require a dip of some sort more so than the pan fried ones do. Let's try it with a little bit of dip on it. This is this Uncle Steve's shake tastes mm. so good. Mmm. Mm. Oh my gosh. These are so yummy. I wish we could beam these out to all of you so you could taste these because they are so delicious. If you didn't tell people that these were gluten-free and low carb, no one would ever know that. So if you're not into that, make these anyway because they're guilt-free. They're not going to go right here to your waistline because the carbs are super low thanks to the use of the almond flour. Oh my gosh, these are good. You did a brilliant job. Mm. These are so yummy. We know what we're eating for the next few minutes. Mm. We'll probably blow through all these before too long. <laughs> these are really, really good, people. They don't, they don't usually last more than a day or two. No, they're not going to last very long. A day or two. Mm. Mm. Okay, so um, we read off the ingredients at the beginning of the show. I'll read them off again as soon as I finish chewing, just for those of you who came late. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So what we did today was make low-carb, naturally gluten-free bacon fritters using almond flour. And let me run by the ingredients. We did this at the top of the show, but for those of you that missed it, I'll do it one more time. We used six slices of very crispy bacon that Philip chopped finely. We used one quarter of a yellow onion that Philip also chopped finely. There were two large eggs that Philip whisked together in a bowl. There's one quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese, and there is also one quarter cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. If you're not a fan of mozzarella, you could substitute with cheddar or Colby or Monterey Jack, any kind of cheese like that that you want. There are two cloves of garlic that were minced. There's one quarter cup of parsley. Today we used dried parsley from a jar because we didn't have any fresh parsley in our greenhouse, but you can use fresh parsley if you want. And you can also sub out other herbs like basil, oregano, or sage would also work nicely. There's also one quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper and the piece de resistance of the recipe is a half a cup of almond flour. Those are all the ingredients. Philip used a tablespoon of olive oil for the pan frying, and then we used cooking spray for the ones that went in the oven to help them get nice and crisped up on the exterior. So those are the ingredients for the bacon fritters. As you can see, it's things that are readily available. You might already have everything in your pantry or refrigerator. And the batter came together very quickly, and you're just really enjoying. We are just num, num. chowing down on these. Num, num. You really did a great job on this this afternoon. Thank you for working so hard to make all this lovely yeah. food. These are so yummy and super easy to do. And you can double, triple, or quadruple this recipe if you want to make a lot of these. And like I said before, they reheat really nicely in the oven. Just preheat your oven to 350 and then pop these in on a baking sheet for about 10 minutes. If you want to, you can flip them over halfway through. And that will warm them back up again without over baking them and drying them out too much. So. <clears throat> Delicious. Oh, thank you, Mike G. Barbecue Mike G is reminding everyone to hit the thumbs up button. If you've enjoyed the show today, and we certainly hope that you have, please give us a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber to the Mitch and Philip channel, please click that red subscribe button that's down in the corner. And if you hit the little bell symbol, then you'll get a notification every time we have new content to view. So about half an hour before a live stream, you'll get a little notice sent to your phone as well as when we have other pre-recorded videos to look at. So that is how you can make sure you keep up on what's going on with us. But we do keep a regular schedule here. Every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern time, we are live 
lately we've been in the kitchen and our plan for the rest of the year on Tuesdays is to stay here in the kitchen and either cook or bake or mix up something make fabulous. Goodies, yeah. We're going to make a lot of goodies for now, between now and the end of the year. And then we'll also continue to do some shows like we did last week where I showed you how to make that lovely ginger jar in the background filled with succulents. And we also did some unboxing. We did a Saturday night video last Strawberry weekend. Pot. Strawberry pot. Is that what I said? No. You said ginger jar. Oh, that's ginger jar. Well, there also okay. was a succulent ginger jar. Okay. Well, Philip's going to get it. <laughs> what I did last Thursday was this strawberry pot filled with succulents. That was a project I did on a live stream from downstairs in our studio. Philip is, uh, I mentioned ginger jar. That's what this is. This is actually an apothecary style jar that sometimes is called a ginger jar. And I filled this with some pretty rocks that are actually intended to be used in a fish aquarium. And then I put in some faux succulents inside and we turned this apothecary jar into a little mini terrarium. terrarium. So I thought that came out really cute. It this does. It's a very, very easy project. Pour in some rocks, put in some succulents, put the lid on, you're done. Super easy. And it's so cute. And then all we have to do is we don't have to water it. All we have to do is dust it. And it looks perfect for just about eternity because all the plants are made out of plastic. So if you don't have a green thumb, artificial plants might be the way to go for you. Okay. So, oh my gosh, this has been so much fun today. Woohoo. Okay. We're going to finish off the rest of these bacon fritters while we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We sure do appreciate it. And next week we'll be back. We're actually testing a few different recipes for next week. Right. We might do Crawfle. crawfles. Who knows what a crawfle is? Let's not tell right away and see. Does anyone who's watching right now, if you know what a crawfle is, tell us what a crawfle is sure. in the chat room. I'm sure people have heard of it. It's a really hugely popular thing here in San Francisco. And it's also a thing. I think it's a TikTok thing yeah. as well. But lots of things are TikTok. Yeah, well, we didn't learn it We're from TikTok. We're old folks. We don't have TikTok. No, we don't do That's TikTok. for young people. No, we do Instagram and <laughs> Facebook, like all the old geezers we know. I still send email. Thank you so much, Margaret. Margaret says, great recipe today. Definitely using almond flour and the recipe soon. We hope you like it as much as we do. But it tastes, it, you know, it doesn't add, like she was, Margaret was asking about, does it add a lot of almond flavor? And the answer is no. But it does make for a really nice texture. Yeah for things, a really, really nice texture, and it's very easy to work with. Unfortunately, it doesn't measure out one-to-one -one with wheat flour, so you'll have to experiment with your recipes to make sure that you get the ratios right. And lots of, wheat, lots of recipes that use wheat flour are dependent upon the gluten in the wheat, which there isn't in almond flour, so right. that can make a big difference. A big difference. Okay, so Margaret has to go. Margaret, it's been lovely to have you with us yes. today, all the way from across, across the, the pond, pond in England. How cool is that, that we have friends from all over the planet, literally, thanks to our cooking show. Okay, so that's all we have for you today, peeps. We're just about at the four o'clock hour. So that's the end of our time frame for today. We sure do appreciate all of you joining us today. We are gonna go pig out and eat some mm. more of these bacon fritters with this lovely dip that Philip made with the Uncle Steve Shake Spicy R. This product is so yummy. Everything Uncle Steve's make is Everything Uncle Steve makes is delicious. Yep. Absolutely delicious. Okay, so thank you all for being here today. Bobby Joe, Barbecue Mike, G, Stephanie from Ginger Snap, Daniel, Margaret, Karen, all of our friends. We sure do appreciate you joining us. And we'll be back again next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And maybe sooner, if between now and then, we might have something else to show you. And if we do, we'll send you an announcement. <laughs> A little while before we do the next video. Did somebody say what a croffle was? Oh, did anyone say what a croffle was? No, no one said what a croffle was. Uh, Mona says, watching on replay, see you next time. Okay, okay well, <laughs> no one knows what a croffle is, at least not anyone that typed anything in the message. So we'll tell you what a croffle is in the not too distant future, and we'll also show you exactly how to make them. It's actually really cool and really fun. Okay, so thanks again for joining us today. I'm Mitch. I'm Bella. Coming to you from San Francisco, California. And we'll see you all again next week. Thanks for joining us. Ciao. Ciao. Bella.